Now I'm going to add trim around the cab and to do that I'll use a piece of corner trim on these two open corners here in the front and then just uh, come flat with some of the just uh, plain straight trim along the bottom and the top and this back edge this this back edge does not get wrapped just to bring the trim right to the edge and then on the front I'll add a couple of diagonal pieces right here at the top and then a short piece down here at the bottom to fill in. So I'll get that accomplished and then I'll be back. For the window trim I've decided to use this border that is on this uh, eclectic emporium paper. Now we need to cut strips that are about a quarter of an inch wide and so if you notice on this paper, if you take a good look, at least the one that I have, on one edge the outside border is a little bit narrower than on the other ones. And we're going to probably need uh, at least three sides of, of a sheet of paper, um, a minimum of 36 inches. You might need a little bit more. But what I want to do is whichever side is the shortest uh, with this border, that's what I'm going to mimic. And that will work out. This one has just a little sliver of, of cream on the outside. And when I put my ruler down here and I see what uh, one quarter inch is, it comes just to the inside of the little tick marks on the inside of the border. So that'll be perfect. And so on the other sides, I can use that outside of that tick mark to line up my ruler to cut my quarter inch. So you just want to make sure you have about the same amount of reveal on the outside of this cream color. Um, I put the paper on just on top of some black cardstock, so hopefully you can see better. Uh, here, there's about, to start with, there's about an eighth of an inch, and over here, there's less than a sixteenth. So we'll definitely need to trim some off of there. And I just, before I cut the strips, I just back it with some score tape so I can go ahead and cut those strips. So I'll get those strips cut, and then I'll be back to show you how to put the windows together. So this is what our completed windows will look like. We're going to make four that are the large size, and that is one quarter inch wide by two inches tall. And then we'll make two of the small size that is one and one eighth by one and one quarter. And so we have three layers to the windows. The first is the trim that we just talked about cutting. Next, I'm using some, um, it's called frosted by Tim Holtz, part of the Ideology line. And I, you could also use packaging plastic if you didn't have any of this frosted, or you can om omit that altogether. I just, I just wanted to have something in the windows, but not something really shiny. So that's why I went with this frosted. And then in the back, I'm using some of this bird's paper. It's what's on the back of the... Um, where we cut out one of the emblems for the wheels. And I'm also, I think you can tell here the difference between this side of the paper and the left side over here. I've just taken some of my uh, brown distress ink. I'm using uh, ground ex espresso. And I'm just darkening that a little bit so that the birds won't stand out so well or so much. Um, so, let me just show you how I put these together. The key to working on this is having a good sharp blade in your craft knife. That helps make these mitered corners really easy. And so, I've already started this one. Let me show you how to continue along. Uh, start out by the paper is not symmetrical, so always look at it and see where does that miter have to be. This is the last one I cut off, 
and the miter is going in the wrong direction. So I'm just using the lines on my craft mat here. I have a, a, a 45 degree angle line on here. Putting my blade right on top of that line and I can just easily cut right through there and get a nice little miter. Now I have this wild honey marker which I find matches that uh, color pretty well and I, you can just come in here and hit the edge of that um, where that border is as well so that you don't have any white paper showing. And then because this main mat is green I usually work on something where I can see this easily and I'll just get this tape backing off of here. Line up that miter nicely and then come down the edge of the plastic and just come past the corner here. And then I take this unit back over to my craft mat and line up the corner of the plastic. The two corners are coming into this 45 degree angle line here. And then I can again put my blade right on that line. And you can kind of hear when it goes through that paper. Um, it just don't press hard, too hard and you won't go through the plastic. And then this is where I would take my marker and just go right along that edge to get rid of the white. Now here to get this end piece, again this miter is going in the wrong direction so I'm just going to bring that over to my craft mat and make it go in the opposite direction color that end. Then I'm only going to, on this last edge, I'm only peeling this tab back a, a tiny bit because I don't want it to stick over here on this other end. Now I'm just going to line that up there right to the corner and take this back down to the craft mat to that 45 degree angle and then I can come, I heard that, and well it came right off, and now I can pull up the, off the tape backing, hit that white edge with my marker, and now I have a nicely mitered frame. I'll give that a burnish. And then on the back here, I'm going to just lay down some quarter inch score tape around the borders, so I'll do that. So I've added score tape to the edges here. I've already removed the backing. I think you can see the shininess of the tape in the video. And then I have cut a piece of my darkened paper to the same size as my window, which for the large one is one and one quarter by two. And I'm just going to put that here on the back. And then we can give that a good burnish. Then I'll ink the edges and prep the back with some score tape uh, for attaching to the cab. And I'll finish my other windows. So I need two more at the large size, which again was one and one quarter by two. And I need one more at the small size, which is one and one eighth by one and one quarter. So I'll be back when I've got those windows completed. So I've got my windows all finished and I've prepped the backs with score tape. And I'm now ready to put them on the cab. So I've placed my windows and I have them a half an inch down from the bottom of the top trim. So there's a half an inch space here. And then 
for each window it's three eighths of an inch in between the edge of the trim and the edge of the window so that's oh probably a little bit more than a quarter of an inch in between the two windows so half an inch down three eighths of an inch in from either side is what I used and then on the front these two windows the smaller side is the horizontal edge so it's one and one eighth going across and one and one quarter coming down and I left about an eighth of an inch in between the edge of the trim and the window and probably about an eighth of an inch um, up here to this corner as well maybe just a hair more and then I tried to get them even there so that's our windows so now we're ready to work on the roof and I've cut out my two roof bottoms my four roof front back and support pieces and my two roof sides and that's what we need to get started I've also cut a piece of uh, cardstock joining strip that is the same length as the roof bottom five and a quarter inches now we need to do a little marking here to make sure we get the right angle for our roof so I'm going to bring in the locomotive And what you want to do is take one of these roof front back support pieces and hold it up so that it overhangs on the left and right the exact same amount. And hold it there tightly and then trace a line on either side. Now once we have those lines, we'll go ahead and mark center and that's where we want uh, our peaks to match. Now when we're not going to necessarily use these lines as cutting lines because we need to make sure that when the line is extended it uh, doesn't end up being below the point. So if I put my ruler on here and extend that line, and for me it is going underneath this point over here, I'm going to just hold my ruler parallel to that line, just move it up a little bit, and then draw another line that goes to that corner. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. Hold my ruler parallel. To that line and now I'm going to cut out on my second line so I'm going to erase these first lines so I don't get confused and I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to try it on to see how it fits so here's my piece that I've cut the angle out of and in order to try it out we need to join our two roof bottom pieces with this cardstock joining strip just butt the two pieces up against each other go ahead and give that a good burnish and then we'll put this on the cab and try out this this piece so here's my roof bottom that I've joined the join is underneath and I'm just putting it here so that it's evenly um, extending over the two sides it extends about one eighth of an inch I would say and then this is the piece I've cut so now I'm going to just fit it up on here and it should fit nicely without any gaps there and if you noticed any gaps you know anything significant here I've got just a tiny sliver um, I can remove that if I want to by just 
cutting the end up a little bit but frankly I think it is very close close enough now the uh, these pieces are sized so that there's about a sixteenth of an inch difference between the size of the roof bottom and the length going across here so don't expect the two sides to meet up here so now we've got a piece that we can use as a template I'm going to use that as a template to cut my other pieces but in the meantime I'm going to run a bead of glue down the center of this roof bottom piece and then I'm just going to put it on top of here keep it straight of course and that will just help reinforce and get that roof to want to be stay in its proper position so you could just hold that for a, a couple minutes till that glue sets up or put a little weight on there um, and then just set this aside so I'm going to mark this piece as my master and the other thing I want to do is I just want this to be a quarter of an inch tall so I'm going to come with my ruler and make a tick mark on each edge a quarter inch from the bottom point so now that I've marked those two tick marks I want to extend my center line mark up here so I know where I'm aiming for and now I only want this piece to be as wide as that basically a quarter inch wide it may just be a hair more than quarter inch but just you look through your ruler and hold that at quarter inch come up here to the center line connect the set where the ruler meets the center line with your dot down there on the side and then repeat on the other side so now we have a piece that looks like this and you can um, test it out again on your roof and make sure that it is fitting right and then use this as a template to cut the other three pieces so you end up with four angled pieces like this so I'll do that and then I'll be back so to build the roof we're going to put these angle pieces flush with the two ends and then space the other two out here in the middle and just to give myself a guideline I'm going to measure oh I would say about an inch and five eighths in I just want to have something straight to line up those central pieces with so there we go and I'm going to build this on top leaving it on top of the roof here because this is going to be flimsy and it won't hold the right shape so I think this is the easiest way to do it just obviously be careful um, with glue I'm going to protect the boiler with some patty paper and do other things just to make sure that that I don't get glue anywhere because sometimes I'm not the neatest gluer so just start here by putting a bead of glue right along here now remember that the ends should be shy of the ends of the slanted pieces should be shy of the edges by a sixteenth of an inch so when you put yours on here if you don't see that do some trimming but they should 
it should be pretty close to being accurate and then just go ahead and give that some pressure make sure everything is staying vertical and repeat that for your other uh, angled pieces and then once you've got all four of the angled pieces on the little side pieces they fit right on top of the edges that's why we held the angled pieces back a sixteenth of an inch so go ahead and glue those on and then let everything set up and dry so now our roof is dry and so we can work on covering the sides and I've cut some strips of paper that are 7 8 inch wide and what I'm going to do is line them up flush with this top edge, that's the open edge here, and then wrap to the underside. Probably do this in several stages. Um, the, the ends first uh, would, and come and make this um, a nice butt join for this angle and wrap it a little bit onto the sides and then take a couple side pieces is how I'm thinking about doing it. Or you could continually wrap around I never know where those joins will be so I like to be um, more in control of where they are so um, that's how, why I'm going to do it this way but you can suit yourself of course so um, just to figure out this angle for that you can uh, use a protractor or just take slight slivers off of here or measure underneath either either way now just remember that this is the bottom so we want to start by uh, lining up here on the open edge and wrapping to the bottom so I've got all of my edges wrapped here and I took a moment to ink them and then the back part of the roof overhangs the cab by about an inch so I don't want to have any chipboard showing there. I've already filled in with my little wedges that I cut out. So I'm just going to take another scrap and put that in just so that on the back um, nothing will show there. So I'll get that accomplished. So I finished covering the bottom of my uh, roof with some pattern paper here and now we're ready to start working on the top I've got my two rooftop pieces cut and I have a strip of cardstock joining strip here and I'm just going to put these two pieces together and butt them up And give that a good burnish. And this is the paper that I've decided to use for the uh, top of the roof. Uh, the stripes are going to be on the outside. And what I've done here is on the opposite side I've prepped with some score tape. I cut this piece of paper. Right now it's the uh, it's still 12 inches long, but it's 6 and 3 quarters inches wide. The uh, rooftop pieces are 5 and 3 quarters inches wide, so that gives us a half an inch that we can wrap uh, when we uh, to finish off the edges. So because this is stripes, I'm going to try to do my best to keep my stripes straight. So I've marked a half an inch line in here and a half an inch line in on that side and I checked to see that my stripes were were running uh, parallel with the edge and so I'm going to start by just removing score tape from one side probably just one strip here so that um, I'll have an opportunity to move it if I need to so I'm going to line it up here on my two one half inch lines and then just kind of I'll just do it lightly and then check on the other side and see if it's straight so only removing one strip from this outside edge of uh, one strip of score tape backing from this outside edge to begin with 
So I've just stuck down this one strip here and then I've just folded gently along this line here so I can check check my stripe and it looks good. So now I'm going to remove the score tape just from this one side and get it fastened down. Don't remove it from this other side yet. So now I have one side of my roof attached here and because this roof has a, a slope to it, what we want to do is make sure we account for that. So what I'm going to do is put my roof on top of the, the roof bottom and line up those center creases and then I can use that to make sure I'm allowing enough uh, to bend around that roof peak. And again what I'll do for that is just remove one strip to begin with of the score tape backing I have my roof aligned there and now I can reach underneath here and kind of hold on to that and I'm just kind of rubbing right there at that roof peak. Then I can check that out and see how that's going. And everything's happy. Then we can remove the rest of this score tape backing and get it completely attached. So now I have the second side completely attached and I can take my ruler and trim off this excess decorative paper so that I'm left with a half an inch uh, overhang all the way around. And I'll go ahead and prep that with some score tape. So now I'm ready to wrap my corners around here. And I want this to stay pretty flat on here. So I'm just going to allow, just uh, when I miter these corners, I, I want to allow just uh, uh, the width of the chipboard basically to where I make that miter. Now I have one of these perfect trim rulers. They make two different styles but both of them have this uh, dimension of .0625 and that's the corner I'm going to use to help me figure out how much to trim off. If you don't have something like that you can um, use, uh, just come out past the corner uh, just a tad more than the width of the chipboard and cut your miters. Uh, a 45 degree angle just cut them off and then you'll be able to have a nice flat corner there. So I cut my 45 degree angles on my corners and you can see I've wrapped the long edges here. Now in order to wrap the, the sides here I need to make a, a cut just perpendicular to that or parallel to the line here perpendicular to the edge just right there in the center and then I'll be able to wrap these last two pieces so after our rooftop is wrapped and I've inked the edges and burnished it of course we can attach it to the roof bottom it attaches to this side with the ribs and when we put it on here we'll just use wet glue and we'll just make sure that it is centered left to right top to bottom and then let that give it some good pressure and let it set up and dry and then once uh, the glue is set up and our roof is all together we can attach it to the cab. A couple of things. I have removed the back panel here because I don't want to have any danger of um, gluing that on. Um, I have a piece of patty paper here just to protect from gluing. And then this piece of the roof that has the extended coverage on the bottom 
we're going to put that on to the back. So this part goes to the back. And when we put this on, we're going to have about a quarter of an inch overhang in the front. The majority of the overhang is going to be towards the back. So, let me see if I can show you this this way. So, see here where my thumb is, my right thumb is pointing? There's about a quarter of an inch overhang from the front end of the cab to this bottom part of the roof. So we have about an inch back here and a quarter of an inch up here. So just put that on with some wet glue, give it some pressure, and allow that to set up and dry. So now here is the locomotive with the roof of the cab attached and see how it's overhanging and then this is how it fits on the back we have a nice overhang there as well